We're back with more Terraria. We should be finishing it today. I'm trying to beat all bosses. Hey, thanks, Ruben. Appreciate that. Um, give you a tour of the things I've changed. Things are a bit different once again. Just gonna run around the world here, please. Minecraft hype. I would like to play Minecraft. It's doing decently in the voting system. Main thing I did was I flattened the world and built a big asphalt bridge across the whole thing for the purposes of fighting um, the Empress and also I think somebody said that the Moon Lord you want to kind of run away from constantly, so... This is pretty nice to have this max speed increase. It's probably the most significant thing that's changed here. I also built it into a sky bridge up top and built heart lanterns and campfires all along the path here. So that's the general idea. Um, as far as gear changes and item changes, I'm not gonna bother going through the stuff that I found in the process of building that. I think we've we've seen most of the content and talked about most of the content so far. So just the specifics that are gonna affect the end game here. Um, I really like this solar eruption weapon that we built last episode, so much so that I kinda wanna stop doing ranged even though we've done it for the whole game. And as a result, I built uh, Beetle Armor at Walter's suggestion, which is really nice. Gives you a stacking buff. When you're not taking damage, it reduces your damage taken next hit. So it kind of rewards you for avoiding damage for some time. Um, also went ahead and finished building the Celestial Shell, which is a combination of the Merfolk drop, the Werewolf drop, uh, the Vampire from the Solar Eclipse drop. It took me like five or six Solar Eclipses to finally get it. Just was not getting it. And it dropped from the Golem. Seems like it's a pretty decent, just overall accessory. Uh, also, I made this warding fire gauntlet. I think everything else you see there is about the same. I did explore dye finally off stream. It's a couple of these strange plants that I want to get out of my storage. So dye is kind of cool. I think it looks kind of janky. Maybe there's certain armor sets that it looks okay, on, but like if we put some here, it makes it. I don't know. I think they just kind of force placed it onto the gear instead of having a custom color profile for every pixel and every piece of armor in the game. Uh, maybe there's certain dyes it works better on. I know like the beetle armor in particular looks pretty bad no matter what dye you throw on there. Uh, that's the gist of what I did though. I made some new potions. I think while I was exploring I found a frozen key so I might go scope that out here in a second. Um, but the, the gist of it is that I'm switching to melee for the rest of the playthrough. And I found a frozen key, and I farmed a decent amount of uh, crap from the pillars. We'd fight the pillars, fight all four of them, and then uh, log off once the Moon Lord spawned so as not to fight him. So I've got a bunch of fragments. I made a few of these sigils to spawn the Moon Lord directly. I'll probably still go ahead and fight the pillars because it's kind of fun to do, and I've got a good setup for it now. And built a bunch of uh, banners along the way for the pillar enemies. Um, we still have to do a few things. We have to do the pumpkin moon, so I made four of those. The frost moon, so I made four of those. Uh, the empress boss, and then moon lord. And I, I think I have to do all four of those at night. And I don't have to do moon lord at night, but I have this celestial shell that gives me extra stat boost. So I'm going to attempt to do that. Um, so it's already almost morning. I guess for now I'll go open up the frost key chest and maybe explore around and see what else I can find before we attempt one of those four events. I'll probably do the invasion first. Unique die is jankier looking than the regular kind. Oh, which has a unique mechanism for making it. Sure. Why would I need more than four? It's just an invasion event, right? for both the pumpkin moon and the Christmas moon. I think the ice chest was near to the entrance. Yeah, I might look into making or checking out the standard die then if we think the standard die looks better. Those are giving it a shot. Need these guys alone. Deal with them later. 
Frozen chest. Staff of the Frost Hydra. Okay. I don't think I ever found the ranged... Which biome has ranged gear? So I got Ice, Corruption, and Hallow. All right. Uh, Staff of the Frost Hydra. Summons a powerful Frost Hydra to spit ice at your enemies. Oh, it's like Castlevania. Oh, does it not folly? Does it not count as a summon? Doesn't seem like it's counting against my other two summons that I give up. Well, that's another thing that I drop. I got a drop for that I didn't notice. Um, I got the Wisp in a Bottle, which I think is a better light source than the Treasure Ghost that I was using before. Sentry is a stationary summon that doesn't count versus your summon limit. Oh, well, that might be kind of nice for this invasion event at nighttime. Right? How does it determine which way it faces, or does it just turn if there are enemies that spawn? So we'll hold on to that. Why not? I made some super healing potions too, because I noticed I was like, I really need to be prepped as much as possible for these bosses. I googled the wiki, is there a healing item that's better than the 150 heal potion? And it uses these fragments, so I went ahead and did that too. I could probably do another fragment spawn, but I don't think I want any of the pillars to be alive while I'm fighting the other bosses, so... Even if I just left one alive, that's probably a bad idea. Um... Aki Fall had mentioned looking f in some of the biome chests, like the chests that are in the air, but there were some interesting items for combination that I hadn't found previously. So I did do that, and I think the only thing I found, possibly what Aki was talking about, was a is it a balloon. Oh God, I don't remember where I put it. It's, this week's a nightmare in terms of keeping track of all this stuff that I found. So let me see if I can track it down here. There it is, red balloon. I haven't looked to see if this combines with anything. Does not benefit from summon minion buffs. If you do the tower defense event, you get armor specific to give you more sentries. Oh, okay. See, I thought that the tower defense game was like a parallel progression track, or can you use that stuff for the main game? Cloud in a balloon. Oh. Does that combine with other things? Possibly, just things I don't have access to, like these chests. Jungle chest is a ranged weapon. Yeah, I have the vampire knives, which are pretty nice. Oh, it combined with any X in a bottle accessory. Okay. Obviously, here I killed Plantera a few more times. I killed the twins to get some hallowed bars. Um, I think I killed Skeletron at some point on a farming world. I accidentally dug through the dungeon and got one shot by a dungeon guardian and I was like, oh my god, my stuff is gone forever. Um, top speed on this asphalt is pretty good. Did they add this after Factorio came out? I like this idea of blocks that when you walk on increase your movement speed. It's kind of cool. I don't know if there's another game that did that first or if Minecraft is a similar mechanic. Factorio was the first time I had heard of anything like it. I'm trying to think if there's anything productive I can do before nighttime, to be honest. Um, I do have a lace swing. I guess I should pull it out and be ready with it. Bundle of balloons. Weird to make it this far without having your character be draped in balloons. You get all of the X in a balloon, you can combine them into a quadruple jump. Oh, that's cool. I think I got a sandstorm in a bottle or something like that. I think I put it in my special chest. I guess I could fight Duke Fisheron again, right? He doesn't care about the time that you fight him. I could probably wreck him now, maybe, Let's see. Oh, I guess I got the sandstorm in a bottle. What does it drop from? I don't even know where I got it from. Oh, 
it's only found in pyramids. Interesting. Avoid getting too high up in the air, right? So I can use my new fangled setup, but. I get too high, he'll enrage. And if I run too far from the ocean, he'll enrage, right? Nice. Yeah, it was much easier than last time. I got the bow that time. Uh, trophy. Tsunami. That's pretty cool. So if I was still doing ranged, I don't know. I'm assuming that's not better than the phantasm thing that you craft from the pillars, but still a pretty neat drop. Yeah, I just ended up getting enough fragments to craft both of all of the those pieces. right at the top of space. Okay. Yeah, I decided to run both the dragon and the cell. Oh, I didn't bring the other truffle worm with me. Okay. That's fair. I can get back here easily. So the event that the snow globe summons is a completely different event that doesn't have a boss-like creature to it. Is that right? I still haven't done any fishing. I don't know what it is about it. I'll probably try it after we beat the game, but just have not felt motivated to do it for whatever reason. has been defeated. What do you drop? Oh, another thing I crafted was this thing, because it looked like you just made that from the different fragments. I don't know if I like it very much. It looks cool, for sure. So I don't really have much use for it anymore with all the other maneuverability I have. Can snow globe be done during the day? Because maybe I can do that in between events here. Oh, right. I think I already had that as a drop. Okay. That was cool. Okay, I'll do it on the next day then. I have this area painted out the sections where the pillars can spawn to try to, like, optimally place the associated banners. I didn't get enough banners to have all of them placed at every location. Some of those mobs are more annoying to kill than others, like the uh, the worm enemy and the solar pillar is a pain in the butt to try to get banners for. But I got a decent number of them on the whole. God, I'm sure that <laughs> video compression does not enjoy running at 95 miles an hour. Assume that looks like crap on Twitch. The final boss is gonna look like garbage. Uh, very annoying to kill. Guess I could try moving some more NPCs. I didn't do any of that this week. Um, Somebody on YouTube commented that there's a different shield accessory, so I'm not using the Ankh shield right now. I, I wanted that not because chat pointed me to it for what it's worth. I wanted it because I always go for status immunity 
equipment in video games. Um, made a good point that the bosses don't really hit you with status effects at all. At least not ones that can be protected by that shield. And that there's a combination with the paladin shield that's much better. And I think that involves an, a frost tortoise shell, maybe? Uh, which I still haven't gotten as a drop, so I could try to look for that. These summons are pretty good at killing stuff as well. One thing I did get, I had to farm for ectoplasm. Uh, I think I needed ectoplasm to make the summon items for the Halloween and Christmas events. Uh, which was kind of cool in and of itself, like, justified all that time we spent trying to get a bandage in the dungeon last week. Um, but anyway, while I was in there, I got a paladin hammer drop from the paladin, which is basically blessed hammer from Diablo. Uh, it's pretty nutty. I assume that if you get that right away, as soon as it becomes available in the dungeon, it's pretty competitive. The problem is once you get this solar gear, nothing really competes with it as far as I can tell. I know they're done patching this game, but I guess if there was one thing that it would be cool if they could ever add in would be some way to, like, buff all of the different weapons in the game to have similar damage or be similarly useful to the endgame gear. Because you kind of miss that that soul's effect of, oh, I really like the way this weapon works. I kind of want to try it. It's too bad that it stops being viable after I beat Plantera or whatever, you know? Uh, so I don't know how you would do that. If you could just break down gear and use it to strengthen the prior tier of gear. Before this update made vanity slots more selective, most people just kept their swaps on the appropriate vanity slots as an extra inventory. Gotcha. Yeah. I've mostly been playing this game on 1080p, because you pretty much need it for the uh, contaminator to see what you're doing. So I feel really constricted now. I can always turn it back up to 1080p for the final boss, but we'll see how it looks. I've definitely done some testing recording in OBS, and it's hard to see what's going on in such a small window. Where are the tortoises at? Hey, thank you for the follow. See better. And get me killed I'm trying to see better. I think I've got a network that makes it pretty easy for me to recover gear regardless of where I die, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Because the summons are killing things off screen. I have to see if I remember what the sound of the um, turtle is. I don't think I remember. Most of the enemies have a unique, you just hit me noise. That may be it, that oofa, oofa, oofa noise. Hey, there's that. Remember when we lost this thing forever ago? It's pretty crazy. The, the end of hard mode is pretty comparable to the end of pre-hard mode in terms of, like, how trivial, trivial everything becomes. When you first start hard mode, this area is, like, instant death. Nightmare world. Not frost death. It continues to be ridiculously satisfying. Oh, it's almost night time. Let me go prep for this prismatic lace wing fight. Okay, I just have to release it in the hollow, but then I can, after I kill it, I can fight it anywhere. 
recovering all your misplaced piggy banks. Anytime after 7.30 and she won't enrage, right? God damn it. I accidentally quick deposited it, apparently, because I have several of them back here. Let's bring them all so I don't do that. Let's also make sure we're using our gear. I think I can probably do it from up here, but just out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to try to do it closer to where there's actually hollow blocks around me. Oh wait, do I have to do something specific to release it? it doesn't look like it wants to let me consume it. I can't just throw it. I'm gonna try to look for one here, hold on. Does it have to go into a bottle or something first? Just running out of time for the boss fight. E no? Oh, there it is. Prismatic Lacewing Jar, first try. Don't bottle it. Okay, well I've got two other ones. So it's gotta be on the hot bar. Okay, that's too bad. There we go, you're right. Getting out of here is a bitch. Should not do it that way. Ow. It's unfortunate, even though I have the hot bar lock turned on. It's still a thing where if you uh, hover over your buffs, it cancels the fact that you're holding your click down. Oh, that's a tech. <laughs> this is such a cool boss. So you got this Toho bullet hell boss. Very cool. Nice. Cool fight. Nasty Starlight. Huh. Whoa. Holy shit. What? Very fast speed. They're not kidding. <laughs> I assume that's modified by all my other stuff. Oh, I didn't realize you could summon two at once. Yikes. So I think I want to have the full night for the invasion events. I might try to fight her one more time here. I think this still counts as hollow, so we should be okay. Oh shit, wrong weapon. Got a 
close that too. The problem is if daytime happens, she auto enrages and can kill you in one hit, basically. She added after the Moon Lord, technically. Her and the Moon Lord both feel like they're just in a different tier of boss design from the rest of them. Makes me sad that dev development is done now. I guess maybe the team will make a another game that might benefit from some of these lessons they've learned. It's an attack. God, it's one ad on the bridge messing with me here. There we go. Kaleidoscope. I don't see where the kaleidoscope went in my inventory in my blind. Oh, here it is. Whoa! That thing's pretty sweet looking. Summon damage. Oh, is this like the ultimate summon weapon? Or at least pre Moon Lord? If you were doing a summon build? Empress and Queen Slime are both new. Kaleidoscope. That was cool. Oz of this cool stuff we got today. Does she have any other particularly exciting or interesting drops? Like, uh... Still looking for upgrades to my wings. I don't think I've found anything since the uh, the beetle wings. Are there any wing upgrades that just let you fly forever, like the UFO does? All wings have a timer. Dude, I did so many Martian invasions, like, they're insanely common on the edges of the map. Probably got most of my money through that. You fighter in rage, you get a unique summon. Do you get unique wings, too? Once daytime triggers, I'll do the snow globe event, and then at nighttime, we'll do the pumpkin moon or the nasty Christmas present. Oh, yeah, no, but every time I saw the probe, I'm like, I may as well trigger it. It's, it's money and Martian conduit blocks, which are kind of cool looking. Okay, so. What was Dark Star responding to only during the day? Good luck with that. Oh, are Fishron's wings better than the um, beetle wings? Snow globe. So I've got several of them, so. Frost Legion is approaching from the west. 
Now, the only way to get the item to make the Frost Legion is to play the game during Christmas and get presents, right? Like, or to set your system clock in order to get presents to drop. Oh, fish runs are the best of the three. Okay, well, I guess that gives me something to do in between night cycles after I try one of these Frost Legions. Nice. Snowmen with shotguns, it looks like. Is this meant to be a pre-hard mode event? Let's go. Oh, they leave snow behind? Or they have an attack that puts snow on the ground. Interesting. Early to mid hard mode, okay. And there's a comparable Halloween only companion to the Pumpkin Moon event. Only spawn from presence in a hard mode world, okay. Someone's <laughs> got a Tommy gun. Get that uh, quote from the mask. A Tommy gun! I see. Does someone have like a knife? Oh no, it's stabbing you with a candy cane. Oh, maybe it is a knife. Never mind. That's funny. Do they even have any unique drops? Looks like they just dropped snow and a very small amount of money. Do you want to slay a snowman? It's cute. Okay. Um, I might go look for some truffle worms here. Oops. Find where my best, probably there. I know, right? To one of these chests. I was able to stay on top of uh, being organized for a couple episodes, and now it's just all gone to shit. So quickly. Mr. Stabby Banner. Oh, that's cool. If you finish the Naughty Present event, it turns the date to Christmas regardless. Cool. Whoops. Drop the ice thing. You want to stop when it gets teal. Truffle worm already spawned here somewhere. Oh, I hope my hey, I caught one. Cool. See, so, yeah, I hope my summon doesn't kill them. Or try to kill them. Got 
the number of glowing mushrooms you get is just it's comical. Something killed it. Summon zone aggro critters. Do you think they'll damage them if they happen to pass through them, or does a summon have to be aggroed to something to hurt it? They can't nuke them by accident. Showing us having spawned. They could just die. Get out of your bones, McGee. I guess I could put a peace candle down. Shit. It's my fault. I didn't even see it there. Beat it. I think I ever bought the yo-yo glove. I can afford it, so I may as well now, I guess. I think Bones and McGee overrides the truffle worm, maybe? Let's see if I can, if I get far enough away from him, he'll despawn, right? There's one. Truffle worm. Something killed it. The super yo-yo could be fun. Yeah, we probably won't stop immediately after beating the uh, the Moon Lord. I might want to check out what all that unlocks. Do you have, like a new crafting station or anything that you can are guaranteed to be able to do after beating him? Someone killed it? Question mark. Right, we have enough to get a bunch of fish on attempts and see if I can get these wings that are apparently an upgrade. Different food here. I'm not gonna like run out of. I crafted some of these flasks because I like the Ecor debuff. I, was... I googled the Ecor debuff to see if there was any like melee weapon that inflicted it, so I didn't have to carry arrows with me. And so, oh, you can make these flasks at an imbuing station. That's kind of cool. I've got a couple of counterweights. Are you, is each counterweight an accessory slot? God, I didn't realize when you run up a slope like that, you go faster. It's crazy. We get Tempest Staff. Summon damage, summon sharknadoes to fight for you. That's funny. Guessing that doesn't compete with the start of cell, unfortunately. Oh, I should use the frost staff up here. 
What causes a sentry to despawn just being far away from it? dropped it. Uh, I killed something that dropped an anti-gravity hook, where it's like you hook onto something and then you can like spin around the nexus point where you hooked. And it seemed like it would be really good for a boss like this. You just spin constantly to dodge his dash attacks. Got a couple of them. Bubble gun. Martian event? Okay. Okay, that's cute. I think I got one of those before. I like that popping noise with the gun. It's very satisfying. So the sound design in this game is incredible. So do you have a separate limited number of sentries that you're allowed to have spawned? Oh god, please don't be dead because I alt tabbed. It actually hit the... Windows key. No, if that caused any audio issues. I've noticed when the capture card deinitializes like that due to me changing resolution, sometimes it craps the bed. Sentry limits a separate stat. Okay. Oh, it's actually a trackable stat, so just a hidden thing. There are items that give you more sentries. That, that's what you get from the uh, Dungeon Defenders crossover minigame, right? Another one of those. Okay, thanks, Saki. One more, and then we'll go do, I guess, Pumpkin Moon. I was so nasty last week. Celestial gear is nutty. Oh, he died above the thing there. No! Get, don't! Fuck! Alright, well. Let's so clear that arrow has. Razor blade something something. Oh, it's a spell. God, I wish I would have done magic. Some of the magic stuff looks so cool. Let me try to do this real fast. Assume that I have to clear this to start another invasion event. Oh, the game pauses when you alt tab? Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Well, it didn't occur to me that I was gonna get detected and not be able to kill the thing in time, unfortunately. <laughs> that saucer, if you're in 1080p, you can totally see it from that height. Yikes. We'll see if I have to change it for Moonlord. I'd like him to be on the screen for most of the boss fight. Yeah. 
First time I booted up 1080, I don't remember if this game allowed high resolutions when it first came out. I would have definitely played it on the highest resolution that was available to me 10 years ago or whenever. Um, but I feel like the first time I ever booted up 1080p, I was like, wow, this looks like I can see too much. <laughs> but I'm guessing they designed some of the later fights, assuming that you had that sort of vision. Martians have been defeated. Only an hour over time. It's the worst. In-game hour. Let's do pumpkin first. First wave scarecrow. Oh, there's waves. That's cool. So there's these scarecrow enemies. Different looking scarecrow enemies. That's cool. some more banners here for those guys. Scarecrow and Splinterling. Oh, that's a nice way to do this. I like that there's waves instead of it just being a straight up normal invasion. Spooky wood. I think people are saying you have to do this event to get the summon armor, right? That or it was a kill spiders. Was the this, the concept of someone being a damage type... Oh god, more book new boss. Was the concept of someone being a damage type added around the time of the Halloween events? Morning wood. Ah! I get it. Stake launcher. Spiders are early hard mode. Poltergeist. One of these things has a nasty ranged attack. Oh, it's the morning wood. We can move through blocks. Good to know. Oh, this is endgame summon armor. So this would be like what I would use before Moonlord if I wanted to use summons for fighting Moonlord. There's two of them. Whoa! Pump King. Okay, that's an actual boss, it looks like. This is a mistake. Wave 9. I think Terraria would have very many boner jokes. Oh, is it just like while the wave is up, you can get? Oh, I see. So the since I didn't finish off Morning Wood that time. I just filled the meter by killing bosses. Gotcha. Yeah, if you get in their hitbox with that, I think you hit them a lot more. It's crazy. So it'll keep spawning Morning Wood and Pumpkin. Headless Horseman. Morning Wood, Pumpkin. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't do this right away because I remember saying, I want to do this event really early in hard mode. And they're like, don't do this right away in hard mode. You will have a bad time. Is, 
I imagine this is pretty rough if you're doing this without celestial gear, but is this doable around the time you're fighting Fishron? Or Golem? I thought there was going to be 10 waves. Oh, it's only available after Punter. I guess that's right with what you have to use to craft it. I may have been asking about the snow globes, which I think we got confused on the difficulty of that event. With the f f Christmas moon. Doable post golem, you know. Like an appropriate setup. Headless horseman. Spider egg just dropped, whatever that does. God, so many bosses. Definitely much nastier than any of the other invasion events, which are kind of a joke. I guess pirate can get kind of nasty depending on where you're standing. So they all have ranged attacks. The wave format to this is like the fight caves in RuneScape. And she get down to it basically just being bosses. Oh wow, yeah, you basically need the whole night for this, don't you? Be starting an hour late might be a problem here. A lot of time left in the night. normal enemies if I wasn't flying over their spawn points. I'm trying to get to those hearts over there, Jesus. Baleful Harvest. So did I technically make it, it looks like? I'm just fighting the bosses that are left over now. Oh my god. So many. Stuck inside of them. God, this is hilarious. This is just a reward. Let me see. And then they despawn. Cool. Okay. That was crazy. It's this unkillable spider that's chasing me. Yeah, the Ankh Shield would have been nice. Alright. Is this full? Okay, no, I can go around and pick everything up. Now it's treated as being Halloween for a day. Oh my god, it's a pirate invasion. What? Game, calm down. I didn't even see the pop up saying that was happening. I assume I got enough candy corn rifle, nice. I assume I got enough uh, spooky wood there to make the summon armor set. Oh, you know, I can just go back to where I have a setup for this, doesn't have to be in my roof. Halloween would just make normal enemies drop um, stuff that's comparable to the snow globe. I got 548 spooky wood. 750 for the full set. Goodie bag. 
Oh, okay, a goodie bag is a present. Where is... I did not get a single pirate invasion for the last week. Several blood moons, several eclipses. There it is. Come on, further down, or I can hit you. Stuck on the terrain or something? Flying Dutchman. Which maybe drops something, but I can't tell at the moment. Pirates have been defeated. Oh, the morning wood drops more of them. I see. Yeah, I wasn't. I didn't appreciate until really late into the event that I didn't have to fight those specific bosses. Like I thought on each wave that okay, this wave has three pump kings and two morning woods. And you have to kill them for the wave to progress. I didn't realize that if you hang out at the bottom, you could fight the regular enemies more. A morning wood's the only enemy that drops it. Okay. Right on. Well, I kind of want to look through all the crap we just got. Let me go chill out somewhere. I'm guessing this little baby spider I must have accidentally clicked when I was picking up the spider egg. Someone's a pet spider. The uh... Let me get a chest set up for this crap. Steak launcher. That's pretty cool. 82 range damage, so that would have been pretty nice pre-celestial gear. Steaks, fish run, scarecrow hats. Come back to that later. Bunch of souls of flight, amusingly. Okay. Definitely want to start as close to the beginning of nighttime as possible. Spooky hook. Imagine that's not terribly complicated. It's what it sounds like, I assume. Just stylish. Yeah. Buccaneer tunic, eye patches, candy corn is ammo, jack o' lanterns are grenades, raven staff is a summon, looks like. Pretty cool. Someone's a raven to fight for you. Horseman's blade. Melee damage. Insane knockback. It's pretty cool looking. Some of the holiday hooks are pretty decent when you first get them. Right on. <laughs> I love how kind of shitty that is. Like, this is really tiny little bits of ammo and then they break apart. I love that Lewis Black sketch or stand-up bit where he's talking about candy corn. All the candy corn that's ever been made was created in 1930 and every year they just go and gather all the candy corn people threw out in the garbage and repackage it and resell it. it tastes stale and gross. Every year people forget that it's disgusting. They go, oh. Candy corn. Corn that tastes like candy. I think I'll try a bite. Intimidating jack-o'-lantern launcher. Okay, so that uses these guys. It's pretty cool. Again, the sound design is great. They bounce for a while, so they just keep bouncing. Eventually they blow up, but if they hit something while they're bouncing, then they explode. Pretty neat.
play with y'all. Bunch of gold bullshit that I don't care about. I'll worry about later. It'd be fun to go through and get the trophies. There's like master mode uh, exclusive trophies, right? Or expert mode exclusive trophies or exclusive trophies. Goodie bag. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> nice. Oh, the robot costume's amazing. I love the run animation for it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's how I look now. I don't need to do any mining. Wow, yeah, some of this costume stuff is really good looking. Impressed. Oh, I see what I did wrong there. That's not exclus exclusively a vanity item. Fast minecart, accessory that makes slimes passive. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to check out um, Master Mode off stream. It'll be fun. Bitter Harvest. This is a Terraria theme. It plays when you're on a drunk world. Oh, that's a pretty big picture. Dang. I got a robot mask too. Yeah, that's me now. Just we're just gonna do that. Someone's a cursed sapling. Yet another cosmic car key. I have enough of those to last me forever. Octopath's a cool game. Who did the who is the composer for Octopath? I know it wasn't Revo. They're bringing back Revo for Bravely Default 2, right? I kind of want to get rid of the spider mount. The non-light pets are distracting to me. I keep thinking that they're enemies. So nighttime today, we're going to do the Frost Moon event. I guess I could run around and just kill some random enemies here. Let me see about putting some dye on this robot costume, because I bet it looks pretty good on it. Yeah, you said that the regular dyes are less messy looking, basically, compared to the ones from the strange plants. You just buy those from him normally, or you have to mix them. Die of that. Those are all those like beetles and stuff that I've collected that say that they're a dye material, right? Yeah, cyan dye, violet dye, red dye. Is there anything that makes like indigo, like deep blue dye? I really like that glowing mushroom color, but it's uh, it's kind of janky looking when applied to gear. Let's see if there's any other cool ones. Just completely blacks you out. I mean, some of these have cool visual effects, but it makes it so you can't really see what you have equipped anymore. I guess that one you can still kind of tell what it is. Blueberries. I think I have some blueberries. Let me go check. Probably in my plants chest. Blueberries used to make blue dye. Sky blue dye. Okay. I saw the blue flower in there. Blue dye. 
Okay, that looks better. I guess it still kind of has the problem where there's... Like, I feel like there should be certain parts of the costume that are just immune to the dye. Like the eyes on the robot head, for example. Okay, it's going to be nighttime again. We'll do the Christmas event. Same deal. Uh, if I stay too high in the air, it's going to favor to spawn bosses instead of regular enemies. Oh, that's cool. You can mix dye colors. So you mix... You make the dye and then you mix the colors together. You don't mix the ingredients together, is that right? I prefer this then. So special chest. Cool chest. Probably don't need all those depth meters. I guess my issue with the die isn't really something that they could meaningfully improve without spending way too much time on it, more time than it's worth. Presents. It's almost time. Naughty present. Frost moon. Five warded death meters. These despawn naturally after a while. Zombie elf gingerbread man. <laughs> gingerbread man. Yeah, pretty great. So are the elves. Elf archer. Nutcracker. Ever scream. Let's remove the minimap for now. The screen's already got enough crap on it. Whoa. That's pretty cool. So comparable to morning wood, I guess. Is there any kind of armor set that you specifically get from this event, sort of like the summon set from uh, the Halloween event. <laughs> the little copters, that's incredible. I love it. So they drop lots of hearts. Santa NK1. Oh, nutcracker. Oh my god, that thing's amazing looking. <laughs> I love it. It's got a ranged attack though, which I don't love as much. Phenomenal. I love the look of the nutcracker enemy too. Pretty silly. Oh, is that a Krampus, it looks like? Oh, shit. Um, I just lost stream connection. However, I still have chat. 
That was short enough that I might not bother to edit out on YouTube, so sorry if you had to skip ahead a few seconds there. A few minutes. Rampus. Oh, thanks for the heads up, Leon. Um, I'll try to fix that. Can you shoot me a Discord DM about that so I can invent my task list? Oh god, what's with this? Presence falling from the sky, that's great. Yeah, thank you, appreciate it. I love the Santa robot, that's amazing. Big fan. I just noticed the Nutcracker does a really goofy dance attack too. So is it the Santa boss that drops the present bombs? Jump up here, Mr. Everstream. I built that tunnel down there just because I got, oh my god, Ice Queen, new boss. I got like hundreds of um, blue slime banners as a result of building a machine to farm slime to make uh, asphalt. And I was like, well, I don't have room to bank all of these, so I may as well place them. And I guess because it still has a natural background, uh, monsters can still spawn on it, which is kind of cool map back so I can see where this thing is. I'm trying to just use the mini-map as a guide here. But it weirdly doesn't seem to be showing much on it, it's all black. I don't know if that's a debuff I have on me at the moment or something. Zombie elf. Oh, I like the mimic present. That's cool. That's an attack. Oh, I love the Yeti, too. There's a bunch of like mini bosses that are really cool looking. The Krampus one. Yeah, that that Sentinel has some range when it's out. Looks like its attack is piercing too. Gotta be really careful while bringing my mouse towards the top left corner of the screen. If it covers a buff. I stop auto attacking. There's two of them. This is where not having the Ankh shield is kind of a nightmare. Oh, I love the skull that the Santa thing gets. It's after you've done a certain amount of damage to it, I guess. Is this one 15 waves as well? 
and then just bonus bosses until the end. I think this one does an attack that knocks you off your uh, mount. It's like it freezes you or something. one shorter than Finishing add anything new other than it just makes it Christmas for a day. Ice cream. Looks like it gave it to me. Came in just barely, too. Maybe the last five waves are all just farming boss rush waves. Spirit of Christmas spreads cheer. That was cool. Let's see what drops we got here. I'll guess I'll try to prep to go fight Moonlord and play around with Moonlord drops after that. Figure out why my map is all fucky all of a sudden. It's got me a little nervous. I'm gonna try to reload the map in a second. I'm probably not gonna mess around with the tower defense minigame. Maybe after we play Dungeon Defenders, I'll put this game on for a couple hours so that I have the necessary context to appreciate it. Which money did that end up being? I missed, I thought I said I had 69 platinum. Like, whoa, there's no way. Elf banners, elf hats. <laughs> Christmas tree sword. Shoots Christmas ornaments. I think that's the main significant drop I just got. <laughs> that's pretty cool. It's a melee weapon too. Nice. Yeah, I know, right? Enemies apparently get trapped down there. Okay. Santa Claus has arrived. Ah, because it's considered Christmas for today only. Let me try to fix the map really fast. Hold on. I have to clear this. Okay, that fixed it. I got nervous. So I switched to um, Phoenix to get quality options back, and now we're dropping some frames, so I'll keep an eye on it. I might have to switch back to Denver or Dallas. We had that problem over the weekend, too. Oh, that's cool. So he just sells Christmas stuff if you wanted to decorate. Nice. Has to be Christmas, and you have to have done the Frost Legion event. I see. I feel like that sentry is going to be useless for Moonlord if my plan is to just run constantly.
Yeah, I pretty much just got the uh, Christmas tree sword. Oh, I accidentally quick deposited my solar eruption. I think I had a backup that I crafted to try to fish for a... Here it is. Yeah, I already had a superior solar eruption. I didn't want to re-roll that for a godly, so I just crafted a second one and re-rolled that one until I got godly. Is there any real reason to re-roll the summon staves or that change the damage that the summon can do permanently after you summon it. I guess I could do that while I'm waiting for nighttime here. I don't have to fight Moonlord at night, but the Celestial Shell accessory is better at night. Shoddy. Keen. Critical Strike chance on that thing, right? Hurtful. Yeah, okay. Probably be better than that, but it's better than nothing. Let me make sure I've got all the food and stuff I'm going to want for this. I've got plenty of Swiftness, Iron Skin, and Regen Potions. Oh, regardless, I guess it needs to be nighttime for the boss, so I could go start doing the pillars. I'll do that now. I have a pretty decent setup for pillars now. I think the, the magic one is annoying because they shoot a projectile at you that just tracks you constantly. Ruthless is the best prefix for summon equipment. I'm still showing not great stream health over here. My little square is supposed to be green and it's dipping into yellow and orange, but it doesn't look like I'm actually dropping terribly many frames. Um, is anyone having any viewing issues at the moment? Summons don't benefit from crit. Okay, thanks. Let me know if that changes. This guy really gave me trouble for a while. I don't know if it was just I didn't have the right gear, or it was a lot harder in ranged gear. And obviously the Celestial stuff trivializes him pretty significantly. Oh, my summon hit him. It's okay. We're fine. Oh god, not as fine. Never had that thing spawn right next to me. Let's just start from the beginning, shall we? I love this song. The music in this section is incredible. Is that is that an Otherworld track or is that in the original game? Steampunker is probably going to die. I unfortunately built her house like right underneath the most likely location for the pillar spawn. Is Otherworld a completely alternate soundtrack? There's nothing from the original soundtrack in the game. All the graphical effects during the pillars, the music, the design of the enemies, the look of the pillars themselves is just really, really good. It's the perfect way to end something like this. Like, I, I haven't played Minecraft since the original, when the Nether was first added to the game. So I haven't played since they added Endermen or the Ender Dragon. I know about most of that just through cultural osmosis. In the end, it seems like a pretty cool way to top off that game, but this is like super video gamey and incredibly epic. Uh, Minecraft's gonna have a long way to go for me, I think, when we eventually get around to playing it. Hundred and six miles an hour. I guess that's us with the swiftness potion. Uh. 
Well, the problem with the alien and hornet was, um... It spawns the most frequently out of any of these things, and I was trying to just get all the banners. So I was trying to just, like, climb into a hole and get four alien queen banners, but something about the way my world is laid out. Alien queens don't like to spawn, and hornets really like to spawn, so... I was just sitting there holding the button down, and many hundreds of them spawned. More than I wanted to fight. And I ended up only killing, like, a hundred alien queens, so... I don't know if they like like to if they need to have a certain height to spawn in or something, or they don't want to spawn on the surface proper. But I just could not get alien queens. Bad guy terrorizing the planet. Killers are their last attempt to to stop you. Pretty cool. I mean, that's something that's in kind. Of, I talked about this during I think Satisfactory. So really good, and I'll, I'll stand Folding Ideas, Dan Olson videos until I die. Uh, but he's got a video, oops, I accidentally did a colonialism in Minecraft. And it kind of jumped into the idea that these games about terraforming, Minecraft, Terraria, Factorio, Satisfactory, are all about this idea that, like, taming the wilderness is something that's, that's good. Like, culturally... A lot of folks have been raised to believe that taking wilderness and building roads and bridges and stuff is, is satisfying and a good thing to do. It's not necessarily that it's bad. I think anyone would say that it is. Um, well, in some context you would. Stuff in Factorio that's like, be sure to reclaim land from the natives. And you're like, ooh, that's, that's the way to say it. Yikes. That it would be kind of cool if that was the intent, that it's nature trying to fight against you as this, like, invader doctrine of improvement in common law. It's a really good video. He talks about the idea that in order to, uh... It's like if you want to have cats spawn around where you're settled, you need to have villagers around your spawn point, and the best way to get villagers to your spawn point is to kidnap them, to like force them into boats, and bring two villagers to wherever you are and basically force them to breed. Uh, and his point, he's like, like, you know, the Minecraft developers didn't do this on purpose. This is just kind of a natural consequence of the rules and the systems that are in place. Nobody sat down and said, we want to create a a video game that encourages human trafficking, right? Uh, but the interesting part, I thought, was this notion that in a lot of the West, it's just kind of assumed that taming the wilderness, improving the land is, is good and moral and correct, right? Um, I get some mental health benefit. It's calming for me to pick up a game like this or Minecraft and just, like, dig a really long tunnel or, like, flatten a mountain, right? It's, like, meditative. Yeah, I like, I like that about Factorio, Walter. I agree. That's actually a much more... Um, elegant than I thought it was, I think in episode two, when I was complaining about pollution and the existence of enemies. The fact that they use it as their economy is pretty genius, actually. Maybe that's the... that's what RTS games need to do. Maybe there's an RTS game where the enemy AI uh, gains access to more units depending on how your economy is doing instead of evolving completely independently from you. God. These guys are the worst. I don't know if it's just like melee is particularly weak against magic. These have a lot of attacks that are annoying to dodge. It's 
timing might work out almost perfectly here. It's gonna be close to nighttime right when I finish this. Sorry, party girl and wizard, you are almost certainly about to die. Probably gonna have to pour it out of here soon and get my ass kicked. You have a particular enemy that like teleports every time you hit it. Oh, it's the worst. Okay, I won't have to port after all. We'll see. God. Suckers. Mm -hmm. All the other pillar enemies are pretty easy, but these guys just have a particular combination of attacks that are nasty. worth it. Although I think it just ended anyway. Okay. Well, I love this effect before the Moon Lord spawns. It looks so cool. A huge fan of it. I don't want to get too big of a cooldown because I might have to use her during the fight. Can I, I, I guess I'm assuming, can I um, magic mirror during this fight? It looks like he follows me, right? I won't despawn him or anything like that. Oh shit, I forgot to get my... Cut it close here. Well, all right. I might run a little bit too fast. What's that thing that he has grabbing onto me? Does that do something? Got like a tether on me or something? Oh god, that's an attack. Oh god, it releases the eyeball, it looks like. Tongue spawns ads that move you from the Moon Lord. Oh, if I run too fast, he teleports to me. Okay. That death ring is an attack. <laughs> I'm definitely running too fast for this fight, looks like. I don't think I need to get on my top area. I can just run the other direction now. This is a really cool fight. Hold on one second. I can't see him. I'm going to make it 1080p really quick. I might have to do this a different way. Hold on one second. There we go. Oh, that's much better. Okay, I can see what I'm doing now. <laughs> I'll return it after the fight's over. So he just has the one hand now that's taking damage, it looks like. Oh. Oh, his heart's taking damage now. Okay.
get out from the inside of him. God, I can't get out from inside of him at the moment. Finish him. Hey! Nice. Slayer of Worlds. Defeat every boss in Terraria. Oh, it plays the... That's cool. The credits are on the parallax background. Lunar portal staff, portal gun. Oh, I love that, that it plays the credits and you're still playing the game. The mouse with the eyes used to be over contact damage. Okay. That's so cool. I'm a huge fan of that. Okay, let me see what the drops were here. Lunar portal staff. This is a summon. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Is that one of his attacks? Yeah, I forgot that knockback actually stuns you for a second, doesn't it? Oh, that's a sentry, technically? Oh, that's cool. 71 Illuminate. Does a portal gun just look like a... <laughs> Do they have a uh, partnership with Valve or something? I guess Valve doesn't particularly care. So like a minimum distance they have to be. Oh, left click and right click. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, nice. Very cool. How fast can you get here? 179. All right. So can you like, can you shoot things through these? I guess not melee weapons, but if I had a ranged attack. What weapon raises your full speed cap? Oh, they're taking him back to Dungeon Defenders. That's cute. Oh, cool. You can't shoot around the side. <laughs> nice. I love the credits just being in the background. That's wonderful. I always really like the whole parallax background concept in this game anyway. Good thing I didn't fight Moon Lord underground. <laughs> right, let me see what I can make with Luminite. Drill containment units. So like the final drill or something? Is it the manipulator that you use to make stuff? So I have to make luminite bars first, is that right? What do I need for the uh, drill containment unit? Luminite arrows. Solar flare helmet. Minor life region. Pickaxe, drill. Hammocks. I like what these look like here. Forty luminite. Luminite or luminite bars, because I just made all of them into bars already. I guess maybe I have to kill Moon Lord a couple times then. Solar wings. Do all the wings have identical stats? Is it just like, what about all the pickaxes and drills? Is it just your style choice in this case? Okay. Um, Denny still had some time in our sub block. I try not to go super long after the credits, but that seems like that would be cool to try to get a couple more kills in and check out this drill containment unit. 
You need to kill Moonlord a minimum of 15 times and make all of his drops. Did someone say that this summoning thing is new? Wasn't in the game originally? 40 Luminite, Chlorophyte, Shroomite, Spectre, Hellstone, and Meteorite. Okay. I, at one point I made tried to make 50 of everything I had. I guess I didn't finish. 50 Spectre, 60 Shroomite. I'd have to go get some Chlorophyte. I guess I can do that while the credits are playing here. But I don't want to miss them, so I don't want to go underground. Because they're cool. I like these little vignettes they're showing in the background. Is there a max range for the portal gun? Two pairs of the wings are identical. So I basically need to do two kills to make the... to get enough Luminite. If, if I don't use the Luminite to craft anything... Santa Claus was slain. He just fucking dies. Uh, sorry, if I do one more kill, I should have enough Luminite to be able to make the drill containment unit. Oh uh, no, what's the tax collector here? Vortex and Nebula are identical. Solar and Stardust are identical. Oh, 670 blocks. Okay, that's fair. I see, so it only fades like that if you actually go off screen with it. Sure. I was wondering what the deal was with that tortured soul enemy. I saw a lot of them while I was digging my tunnel and they just like die instantly and don't seem to drop anything. Purification powder, you said? I still have some under tools, maybe? That seems pretty uh, obscure. Tough to find under normal circumstances. Oh, I also got a Meowmere minecart. I didn't notice that that dropped. Is that from. It looks like Nian Cat. Is that a drop from uh, Moonlord? Oh, hey, the witch doctor is talking to the lizards. The princess. Hey, reptite friendship. Special thanks to the torch god. Music's pretty cool, too. The Nian cat sword. Oh, I think I got 17 bars exactly, unfortunately, so I must have been pretty unlucky there. I like that little picture of all the NPCs. So that guy is the tax collector. I don't think I ever got the princess. How does she spawn? Thank you for playing. You're welcome. This game was a goddamn treat. And the treasure. All right, well, I might go try to get this tax collector NPC really quick. I'm going to try to pick up my fragments that I left behind from destroying the purple pillar. Tor Princess is all other NPCs. Is the only one I'm missing, then, the tax collector? Everything except Santa. Okay. Way to not die, guys. Proud of y'all. Ah, oh, there's some fucking... So it looks like uh, corruption. Annoying. Must have been a little bit the contaminator mist or something. All right, let me try to do tax collector real quick. I also kind of want to see what this minecart looks like. Is it faster than the bee minecart? Oh, that's amazing. Oh, of course, it leaves a rainbow trail. That's incredible. Same speed as the bee minecart. Not this. It's still cool. Okay, so my plan is I'm going to get the Tax Collector. I'm going to um, fight the Moonlord one more time, see if that gets me enough bars to make a uh, this drill containment unit. God damn it. I got to learn to take my finger off that. Oh, just holding the portal gun increases my max fall speed? Interesting. 
I was gonna about to say, can I like do some shenanigans to force that to go? I should have bought built um asphalt down here. He's... Oops. Bye, summons. I thought he was gonna die in the lava. I'm like, oh, he survived the lava. I guess he'll get an obsidian sky. Oh, never mind. He spawns somewhat frequently down here. Does he count as a rare creature? I didn't notice if he was on that list before. Oh, tortured soul. Saying just use purification powder on him. Oh, that's interesting. Collect. Wait, so how did he get money from your other NPCs, I guess? Does he exist for the happiness system because they hate him or something? Where is he? Looks like Scrooge. It's funny. Uh, the princess should move in automatically at some point. He gathers money from the NPCs. Okay. Well, he predates NPC happiness. Interesting. Because I would have expected he would have been added as a consequence of happiness. Alright. Let's see how another one goes. The only character that hates Santa. <laughs> It's cute. Real estate agents. Have all possible NPCs living in your world. Cute. Where does she spawn in? Oh, okay. It's just a passive source of money all the time. Appreciate what you've done for this land. Thank you. Tiara. Dress. Scepter. Prince uniform. Oh, forest pylon. She just guaranteed to give it? It's convenient. It have to be on dirt or something. Cool. Well, that'll be nice for getting around. Oh, it's too tall. Okay. I'm going to put it somewhere right near where my spawn is. There we go. Perfect. And I can quickly warp once I pass stuff around later. Princess likes everyone and everyone likes her, so she's the opposite of the tax collector. <laughs> Smart. Okay. Uh, I was gonna try to wait for nighttime-ish to get the benefits of the celestial shell, because I had it before. I did okay on the boss without having to cheese the nurse. Yeah, that's where I got the forest pylon. Is she just guaranteed to provide the forest pylon? Is it a reward for getting all NPCs, or is it just a consequence of happiness there at the moment? Tax collector loves the merchant. Make a pissed off merchant and happy tax collector. <laughs>
Moonlord is a really cool boss fight. This game's threat escalation is really well handled. She just wants her to be three NPCs, and we'll sell you whatever pylon. Do the pylons once built give a shit about happiness anymore, or is it just they have to be built in their respective biome? Music box, journey's in. Ending Doom approaches. Oh, is it a full on countdown? That's cool. I like the countdown too, and like the creepy phasing effect around you. Oh, it's Dark Side of the Hollow, Pink Floyd reference. Show to Andrea. Eat my buffs a little too early. It's okay. Might check out the Prince gear too. It kind of had that cool looking royal cape RPG endgame gear look to it from the thumbnail. Werewolf, apparently. Oh, it's <laughs> funny. Knockback protection would be nice. That attack sucks. <laughs> Sorry, NPCs. Sorry. Sorry. Ow. That's for like 60 damage. Can you even take damage in this fight on the higher difficulties like Expert and Master? all this region. I thought maybe it's overkill to build all these heart lanterns all along my bridge. Not thinking it's overkill as much anymore. He said the hands become contact damage after the eyeballs die. Oh, I almost dodged it. Is there any reason to focus on one of them versus the other at first? Ow. That actually protects me from any of his attacks here, I can't really tell. First attempt, I'm gonna just stay away from him here. open now. God. Once the spear hits its heart, I'm glad I built both of these. I was like, 
I think I'm going to need to have the more ranged weapon for this boss, because I saw enough of it last week to know that I didn't want to stand terribly close to it. So I didn't think that the solar eruption would be great. Did they like do like a ticking dot once they're already touching him, though? animation too. Totally be Princess Marston. Oh, he dropped Super Potion too. Sick throw. Tain the Terrarian. Oh, is that like the ultimate yo-yo, basically? Whoa. That's pretty sweet and just shoots out a bunch of other yo-yos on top of that. Is that better than the solar eruption? Damage says it is. Beat this guy with solar eruption in a smaller arena by putting teleporters on either side of a two screen wide and fault run. Oh, that's clever. Just like pressure plate teleporters, so it automatically take you to the other side. Would it let you keep full speed when you do that? Is there any reason to hold on to pure Luminite? It looks like all it does is make uh, the monolith, right? Which just changes the backdrop. I think unfortunately I got the same amount there. Make the yo-yo back to see its true power. Okay, hold on. Oh no, I need to do one more kill. All right. What goes into the yo-yo bag? I think I just bought the glove and threw it into a random chest somewhere. How do you make string? Found it. Thought I had a bunch of counterweights. Maybe I put them in a different chest somewhere. Cobwebs at a loom. Okay. Oh, maybe I put it under melee weapons. Yeah. And it doesn't matter which counterweight, they're all the same. This is string here. Yo-yo bag. Gives the user master yo-yo skills. Oh, it just lets you extend it as far as you want. That's kind of cool. And is that good enough to make this competitive with solar eruption or? I guess you can't move it through locks. So maybe it's, oh, I see there's a little uh, counterweights that are popping up over time. It's pretty cool. I guess I'd use that as a substitute for the Daybreak instead. Oh, and it's demonic, which is pretty good, right? Spawns a second yo-yo and then two counterweights. Okay. Really just want to see this drill unit. It's going to involve fighting this boss one more time. I really like the portal gun idea, that's funny. 
Oh, the second yo-yo also spawns homing projectiles. Interesting. Yeah, that seems pretty strong. I can see why you would want that. Wish I had that thing y'all were talking about that lets you skip a day or skip to time of day, but that's from fishing, right? I can also just try the boss during the daytime. It's not that big of a buff difference, I think. I think you get like extra region and stuff at nighttime. Zenith, like the thing where you combine all the swords together. Are yo-yos affected by things like the fire gauntlet? Increases melee knockback, melee attacks inflict fire damage, increase damage and speed. Oh, you can only skip to the next 4.30 a.m., so you couldn't go to nighttime anyway. Sure. I assume since this game kind of evolved to where, like, true melee stops being viable really quickly with the way the bosses are designed, that your, your melee weapons have to have some kind of, like, ranged attack. I assume that Zenith or whatever mostly is just shooting swords all over the place. Nor's iframes. Seems pretty important. Use that sentry. I guess that sentry is going to be strictly better than the frost hydra, huh? I might try to get Zenith off stream. That would be fun. Trying to collect all the items would be a good time. Oh, thanks, Scarf. Click that. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. This game is so good. Kill the Moon Lord in 11 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of want to get really good at the combat system, learn how to dodge all of Minlord's attacks, and just beat it on master mode at some point. I assume that that's primarily suffering. If I do master mode, I might turn off medium core, because it's turned out in practice, although it, it has been nice to make me feel like I don't want to just throw my corpse at things. It's also super annoying to recover when you die, even if it's like... Get back to your spot in Magic Mirror. If it if you could keep placeholders in your inventory, where the, the items would go back into those placeholders, and it would re-equip your stuff when you got back, it would feel a little bit better. That's kind of what I assumed was going to happen once we learned about placeholders. Yeah, I guess maybe bosses have always despawned when you died, or maybe I only played this game multiplayer and. Uh, back in the day, or maybe it still works this way, multiplayer bosses would only despawn when everyone was dead. So it felt more corpse rushy, um, as long as you had like three or four people. So I guess solo, you're already pretty punished in that the boss despawns when you die, right? And you wasted an attempt, so. I guess maybe it wouldn't be that bad, after all. All right, this should be our last kill. What's more Terraria than farming the final boss? It was cool seeing the credits. After this, I'll craft the drill containment unit. I think I have to go find some chlorophyte real quick, but that shouldn't be too rough. Um, we'll check out the drill containment unit and then we'll call it a day. In multiplayer, as long as at least one person is alive, they stick around so you can more easily corpse rush bosses. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. 
feel like it would be fun to go into master mode now knowing what to expect so I can like try to prepare as much as possible before triggering hard mode. Try this instead of eruption at first. God, I love that visual effect, it's so cool looking. So sorry, I missed it because I was focusing on the fight last time. I was asking if there's any reason to focus one... Like, do you want to kill his head eye first because it spawns that death laser? I'll see if I can look at chat while I'm doing this. This seems lower effort than solar eruption or daybreak. It's going to be really fun to learn how to fight this guy on Master. Because I think all of his attacks are dodgeable, right? You just got to have really good gear, good move speed set up. The top eye spawns the super death laser. Okay. Oh god, that's not... Yeah, it's, it's kind of melting him a bit. Holy crap. <laughs> and I've got so many fragments, I could farm him pretty easily. I guess it must have been really annoying if you had to do the pillars every time just to practice him. Because in Rage Dempers, you have to dodge everything, right? On normal. Forceful Rainbow Crystal Staff. Oh, it's a summon. So not a sentry this time. Oh, is it a sentry though? That's fucking cool. So just kill everything on screen? Can you just put that at your base during an invasion and... Destroy everything? Yeah, I, I missed that for some error. So I thought that I already got the sentry drop from this guy. The portal staff. Surprise, there's two. Okay. Luminite bars. And I have to go quickly get some uh, chlorophyte, unfortunately. I did most of this work already, though. Yeah, I guess the die looks better on this armor. The regular blue die instead of the fancy die. That always drops the portal gun. I guess that makes sense. It's such a cool item. So I don't know at this point if it would significantly change how you play the game, though, the way that, like, wings do, some of the vehicles do. Oh, let me turn the resolution back down one second. Okay. I really need that when I'm actively fighting him. Oh, so I can't see what I'm doing. I probably should have brought a Spolinker potion. Oh well, we'll see if there's any that's just obvious and visible. Nine possible special drops, two of which are sentries. Oh, mother load. Um. Still ridiculously satisfying. I think I need to do that a couple times though. Don't fall in lava and lose everything now. It'd be funny.
DMG and Meow Mirror are the most fun. This might be close. I was pretty close to having enough Chlorophyte already. Got one more node if I can find one there. That should probably will do it. It's just fun to do. It's hard to stop. Chlorified bars. I didn't see how many I had. Hey, perfect. Okay. So you said I need. Let me pause some of this other junk really quick. Probably gonna place these later. Gives me enough room to work with. Do I craft it at the manipulator? Spectre bars, shroomite bars, chlorophyte bars, hellstone bars, meteorite bars, is that right? Let's see if I can see it. Oh, I don't know the lumen. <laughs> makes sense. What am I missing? Go away. Vortex booster. Okay, I'm starting to see some of the armor options here. What's the crafting station for it? Is it not the manipulator? Oh, mithril anvil. Thanks. Drill containment unit. Okay. That thing's pretty cool looking. So it's a little bit slower than the UFO, but... Wait, but it's it's a rideable thing, so how do I activate the the drilling part of it? Oh god, you just left click. Holy shit. That's pretty cool. Does that benefit from uh, mining speed upgrades at all? So I assume that even though the individual blocks are being destroyed more slowly than the Shroomite Claw, this is still faster just because it's taking out so many at once. That's pretty awesome. If what I'm holding doesn't matter, can I have like a weapon out? Well, no. So it just overrides whatever you had held. Oh, does this leave sloped blocks too when you're mining with it? Yeah, so I guess the digging claw is still probably better for digging straight down. But for digging like a long horizontal tunnel, this one's pretty great. Bonus is it affects speed. Also, it looks like being in water doesn't uh, doesn't kick you out of it like it does with the um, Martian car. Oh, I can hold a torch while doing this. That's pretty nice. I like that it it leaves slope blocks behind. That's pretty clean looking. if you're like trying to dig at an angle. Very cool. How much luminite did that leave me with? 12? Should see if there's anything else I can craft. Can you even make sloped blocks in a multiplayer world? I guess they're not, they don't make a distinction between multiplayer and single player worlds, huh? OK. 
Okay, so I guess I can make some of this gear. So is there like no reason for the ham axe or the drill or the pickaxe once you have the drill containment unit? This gear looks really cool. Especially the nebula gear. God, I wish I had gotten mage stuff earlier on because mage seems so awesome. I guess I'll make new wings. See, the other ones are wings. This one's like technological, I guess. Check it out. Oh, that's pretty sweet looking. Nice. Oh, I love the look of that. And now it's also affected by the dye, it looks like. Cool. Let me unhide that, because that looks sweet. Oh no, I gotta do an off-stream mage playthrough, so tragic. Whoa. That's cool, thank you, Scarf. Is that something unique to this kind of wing? Dude, nice. That's comparable to the speed I'm getting right now on the asphalt. Does that have anything to do with your launch speed? Overboard can do that too. So down just, oh, I just noticed that it looks like the wisp moves when I press up and down. I don't think I've had any reason to press up or down so far. That's cool. The Luminite drills are faster than true Mike. Is that even possible? I thought we were already, like, if not at, very close to the uh, mining speed. I guess I can make one real quick. Oh, maybe not. Did I just use Luminite to make this? Yeah. Next time, Gadget. Vortex Wings can do that, too. It's pretty sweet. It's nice for just moving around, too. So you can just jump and press down at the same time and move around pretty smoothly there. Wisp moves based on your directional inputs generally, even if you're stationary. Oh, so like, am I walking into a wall? Oh, that's cool. I think I realized that. So you can use it to try to like scope out caves nearby. I guess by the time you have it, you don't really need that feature anymore. Yeah, you can just launch into max speed almost immediately on asphalt, for example. Gotcha. It's cool. Well, cool. This has been a treat. I really like the way they handled the credits where you just keep playing the game and it plays in the parallax in the background. That was kind of awesome. All these final bosses are really cool. This game has been amazing. Thanks to everyone who uh, <laughs> has showed an interest in seeing Terraria. I will refund any SP spent voting for it since we beat it pretty far ahead of the how long to beat and without it winning the vote. <laughs>